Ghost Call. The Prayer Rug of Nana Saib. A story of freelance diplomacy, intrigue, and mystery in the Far East. K.C. Smith, member of the mystery-shrouded organization operating throughout the Far East and known as the Ghost Corps, buys a curious prayer rug at an auction at the rug market in Cairo. The evident interest displayed in the bit of carpet by Ram Das, a strange and sinister-appearing Hindu, arouses K.C.'s curiosity and suspicion, and he overbids the Hindu. Later in his apartment at the Hotel du Nil, K.C. and his chief, C.D. Baker, become convinced that in the rug's strange pattern is concealed a secret map. Ram Das presents himself and offers to buy the rug. K.C. refuses to part with it, and the Hindu leaves. In the anteroom, he overpowers K- Ali, K.C.'s Arab friend and assistant, and has him carried off to a secret rendezvous. Ram Das conceals himself in K.C.'s apartment, awaiting the departure of C.D. Baker, who, with K.C., is discussing the visit of the strange Hindu. <laughs> of all the unmitigated liars, K.C., you win the belt. Your home in the States filled with <laughs> prayer rugs. Your grand passion. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a case of he who lies last lies best, eh? The yarn that fellow spun about the rug being stolen from him was almost a masterpiece itself. I had to go him one better or give up the rug. I think you were a fool not to have accepted his offer. 2,200 piastres for a rug not worth 10 shillings. If it's worth 2,200 to our friend of the missing eyebrow and the funny cast mark, it is to me. But he knows the secret and you don't. And I don't see how on earth you're going to decipher it. I'll dig it out some way. And what good will it do you? You aren't fool enough to go chasing all over the Orient, trying to match up the chart, if it proves to be one, with some section of some country. It's too long a shot, Casey. What's got into you? Oh, I... I don't know. All I know is that the thing grips my interest, devilishly. When I touch this rug, something... something curious, like an electric shock, seems to flow from it into my my hands, my arms. It's it's almost as if the thing were trying to impart something to me. An occult warning or... or a promise. Oh, nonsense. You're talking rubbish. You've been working too hard. What you need is a vacation. Right, Baker. (laughs) Ah, skip it. I'm all right. Hope so. Well, I wish you luck with your prayer rug. I'm going home. See you at headquarters tomorrow? Yes. Uh, Ali, perhaps I'll take your advice and let Ram Das have the rug. Ali! Where the devil is he? Oh, never mind. He's probably down in the Sarai on the corner. Natives like their coffee and gossip, you know. How well I know. Well, see you tomorrow. All right. Good night, Chief. If you run into Ali downstairs, send him up, will you? All right. Good night, Casey. Good night. Absently, K.C. fills a glass with wine from the decanter placed on the table by Ali. He drinks, glances curiously at the glass, and setting it down, picks up the rug. He drops into a chair with the bit of carpet draped across his knees. Suddenly, with a slight exclamation, he makes an effort to rise. A heavy, overpowering weakness dooms the effort. Dark clouds float before his eyes. He tries to speak, to call Ali. His desire to struggle surrenders to a deep feeling of lassitude. Meanwhile, Ali, still unconscious from the blow dealt him by Ram Das, lies on a cot in a dark rear chamber in a small house near the mosque El Asra. Presently, his eyes open. He stares around him uncertainly. Through a partly open door, bright light patterns a yellow square on a worn carpet. From the lighted chamber comes the sound of voices. It is time, Rao, for the master to return. We have waited long. He will return when his work is finished. I have appeared... I am glad our part was done so easily. I only hope the master did not strike hard enough to kill the Arab dog in there. Listen, someone is coming. Hmm. Uh, It will be the master. It is time. Ah, Ah, you have been long, master. Was there trouble? No. I was forced to wait until the sahib's friend left. And until the drugged wine took effect. And the rug? Is here, of course. The Arab servant, where is he? There, in the next room, still unconscious. (laughs) You struck hard, master. And now? We leave here at once. There is a train for Alexandria within the hour. Tomorrow night, I leave Alexandria for Karachi by plane. 
You and Mustafa will travel by boat. We return to Kundra at once? Yes, get there without delay. I shall be there long before you arrive. I will do nothing until you arrive. And the rug master, you will return it to Lakshmini? I am no fool, Mustafa, who gives up the goose with the golden egg. We have gone to too much trouble and expense in tracing it to give it up so easily. The Rani Lakshmini will be told the rug could not be found. And she will believe Ram Das. I priest of Vishnu and a trusted advisor. <laughs> and if the sahib from whom you took the rug thinks to follow... He will not find the forbidden city of Kundra. It is too well hidden in our Himachal Mountains. However, I shall take steps to prevent such an attempt. Then our work is finished here. And what of the Arab in there? Leave him. Once we are away from this house and out of the city, we will have little to fear. We are ready, then. Our belongings? There, beside the door. We have been prepared to leave at the moment's notice, as you directed. Come, then, and make haste. Kasi, Kasi, Habib. Kasi. Awaken, Kasi. It is I, Ali. Uh, uh, Ali. Well, don't slap my head off. What's the matter? The rug, Kasi. Ramdas has stolen the rug. Ramdas? The rug? Yes, the prayer rug. Ramdas, the Hindu dog, has stolen the prayer rug. <sighs> my head feels like a blimp. Give me some water, Ali. I must have been chewing cotton. Here, Master. That's better. Now tell me what... I passed out completely a few minutes ago. I... Kasi, look. It is near morning. You have been under the influence of drugged wine since 11 o'clock last night. Drugged wine? Who... Ram Das. As I went before him to the outer door, he struck me from behind, and I knew no more until I came to in a strange room. Ah. Well, that accounts for this awful taste in my mouth. How the devil did he drug the wine, and when? When he left this room. If you will recall, he paused a moment there beside the table to light a cigarette. The decanter of wine stood beneath his hand. Ah, Joe. Clever. And Baker and I never took our eyes off him as long as he was in this room. I also watched and was blind. We are children, Cassie. Ah, getting old, losing our grip. Baker was right. We need a vacation. But what happened to you? Where'd they take you? To a house near the mosque El Ashra. Good Lord, way over there? Yes. I watched through a crack in the door and listened to the talk of two men in an adjoining room. Then Ramdas came. Under his arm, he carried the ruck. He told of how he had drugged the wine, overpowered me, and taken the rug when C.D. Baker left, and you slept. How'd you get away? I suppose the fools did not wish to add murder to robbery. However, they left, believing me still unconscious from the blow Ram Das gave me here. They ran like the jackals they are, yeah. leaving the house to me. Oh, lucky they didn't slit your throat. Their plans, you, you heard? Aye. They go to India, to Kathmandu, thanks to Kundra. A forbidden city somewhere in the Himalaya mountains. Yeah, and Ram Das. Who is he? Did you learn? From their talk, I gathered that he is a high priest of Vishnu. Well, with that mark on his forehead? I doubt it, but go on. He is also the trusted advisor of Lakshmini, the Rani of Kundra. Mm. There's a Hindu legend dealing with a prayer rug that once belonged to the Raja Nana Sahib. I recall vague parts of it. Well, you wouldn't know about that, though. <laughs> Some 70 years ago, during the War of Rebellion in India, Nana Saib, to escape the vengeance of the British for the massacre of Cawnpore, fled into the Himalaya mountains, taking with him certain of his followers and a great fortune in gold and jewels. Well, I'll be done. He established a city which has never been found, nor has Nana Saib ever been heard of or seen since. 
His hoard of gold and jewels is said to be hidden somewhere in the mountains near this city. Uh, does the story sound familiar, Cassie? <laughs> you son of a gun. Well, how the devil did you... Well, go on, go the, on. The location of the treasure cave he had woven into the pattern of a prayer rug, which eventually came into the possession of a strange Rani. This woman is said to be the granddaughter of Nana Saib and the present ruler of Kundra, the Forbidden City. The rug was stolen from her when she was a child. The treasure has never been found because those who have since possessed the rug were unable to fathom its secret. That, Gussie, is the tale of Nana Saib's prayer rug, as I have often heard it. Ali, my friend, you're a wonder. That's the story right enough. Where did you hear it? In the days of my youth, I spent some time in Bombay, Calcutta, and various cities of northern India. You speak the language, Urdu? Yes, Kasi. Look, Ali, look. You saw that prayer rug I bought. I... Could it be possible that the one of the legend and the one I had are the same? Conceivable, at least. Else why should Ram Das go to such lengths to gain possession of it? Exactly my thought. Ram Das. That strange cast mark on his forehead. And the missing eyebrow, which gives to his face a most sinister expression. But what connection can he have with your rug or the legend? I wonder. Call the office downstairs and give them C.D. Baker's number. Tell them to get him on the phone for me. I see. It is not more than three o'clock. The C.D. will be sleeping. All right, all right. Wake him up. At once, Kasi. And Ali. Yes, Papi. As soon as you've placed the call, pack our bags. We're taking the morning plane for Alexandria and Karachi. (laughs) 